In the previous video, we showed how to set up property templates so that you could trigger off various rows in your EVT file and then write those values to attributes in your EF or in your event frame. But in this case, for the flow values, we had multiple and you can't really have multiple event frame attributes with the same name in the same event frame. So we wrote a value of 12 and then 13. And then another solution was to add the timestamp into the name of the attribute that gets created, which isn't necessarily always ideal either. So an alternate solution is to instead write these values to PyTags and use the corresponding timestamp um, for when you write to that tag. Then what we could do is go to the event frame template and we could set up a PyPoint data reference event frame attribute. So we're going to show how to do that in this video. So to get started, let's head back to our interface node. We've clicked on the template settings and I'm going to go to tag template and I'll right click add and then we can add our first uh, tag template. The name here indicates the name of the tag where the events will be saved. So you need to make sure that the name that you choose won't result in collisions in your PyData archive. For instance, if I just said flow, there might be many interfaces that use flow or would try and write to that tag called flow. So we would start to get collisions. So what I'm going to do here or what I'm going to use uses a few different placeholders. Uh, but it's not necessarily a suggestion for what you should do. It's just an example for what's possible. And then you need to consider how to do this best so that you don't get collisions. So I'm going to hard code in factory one, and then I'm going to add the area, the process cell, and the actual unit name in addition to the descript, which is the word flow. That comes, the word flow is from the descript column. And then the value I actually want to write into that tag is going to be the, from the pval column. And then the data type in this case, I'm going to use float. So that's the name of the tag that the interface is going to check if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it will create it. And then it's going to write the value from the pval column to that tag and it's going to use the timestamp also from the evt file what we haven't done yet is explain how or what rows this triggers on so if i click next i'm going to click here and say add placeholder and our placeholder here is when the descript column equals a value of flow those are the rows where we want this logic to trigger And I'll click next and finish. So whenever the descript column has a value of flow, it's going to check if this tag exists. If it doesn't, it's going to create it. And then it's going to write an event with the value of pval at the timestamp uh, that's in the left column in the EVT file. And I'm going to go ahead and save and restart my interface. And we'll let it rescan the EVT file for just a minute while I go into Pi System Management Tools. Under Data, Archive Editor. Search for my Factory 1 tag. You can see the tag that got created has my area, my process cell, and my unit, along with the descript flow for the rows that triggered. And I'm going to look a little bit back further in history, since my EVT file is older. And sure enough, you can see that it wrote two events, one for the value of 12 and one for the value of 13, corresponding to the timestamps that are in the EVT file. Now, if we do go into Pi System Explorer to find our event frame,
And we could look at the various levels. Here's the attributes. None of these say flow. Flow isn't shown here, here, or here. None of these levels actually reference that PyPoint data reference. That's something that we're going to have to do manually by using event, an event frame template. And just so you're aware, if you had watched the previous video on property templates, the property template here, uh, the ones we had created in the other example for flow, I have removed just so there's no confusion as to where uh, the flow EF attribute comes from. So what we're going to do is create a derived event frame template that's going to be used for this initialize phase. And we're going to set it up in the Pi Event Frames Interface Manager to only use that new event frame template for those phases that, ha that are called initialize. Because you may have flow for some of your phases, but not all of them. And why would you want to be forced into using a derived template or a template that has attributes that aren't relevant to you? So we're going to be able to specify different templates, event frame templates, based on the name of the phase. So to get started, let's create that derived template. And I'm going to do that by going to the library, open up my event frame templates, and here's our phase template. So just as a reminder, if I go over to the templates recipe, if I click on phase here, you can see that we are using that phase template. And we want to use a different template, but only for phases that have the specific name initialized. So we're going to right click and say new derived template. And we're going to rename this to phase uh, initialize because maybe only the initialize phase has a flow. And I'm going to add allow extensions and then I'll go to attribute templates, say new attribute template and call this flow. And I'm not going to link this to the PyPoint data reference quite yet, but we are going to come back and do that. Let me check this in. First, what I'd like to do is go back to the Pi Event Frames Interface Manager and determine how we would specify to use that new derived template, specifically when the phase name equals initialize. So to change the phase template, specifically for when the phase name equals initialize, I'm going to right click on phase and say add child recipe template. The name here refers to the name of the event frame template that you would like to use. And in my case, it is phase underscore initialize. If I click next and I go to triggers, it's going to be when the phase value is initialized. So I'm going to say add placeholder and say phase. And here I'm going to say value equals initialize and click finish. I'm then going to right click and say add child recipe template and this one is just going to be phase and there's going to be no trigger on that one. So what it's going to do is when you hit a phase it's going to go through the templates in order and it's going to say, does this one match my trigger? It does. It has the name initialize. I'm going to then use this event frame template. If it doesn't have the name initialize, it's going to still go through them in order. Say, does this one match my trigger? No, my phase is not called initialize. Let me go to the next one. Oh, this one can trigger for anything. I'm going to use this one instead. So then this basically ends up being the default template when none of the other ones are valid. Before restarting the interface to get the new template assigned to our phase, I'm actually going to delete our event frame and recreate it. So in PySystem Explorer, I'm going to delete the event frame, make sure there's nothing left to check in, and I'll go to Services and restart our interface.
And when I refresh in Pi System Explorer, I can see that the event frame has been recreated. I'll go down to my initialize phase, take a look at my attributes, and sure enough, there now is a flow attribute because if I go to the general tab, you can see that the template that got used is phase initialize. And for any phase that didn't have the name of initialize, it would just use the regular phase template, and that template would not include flow. However, you can see here that this is our templatized attribute because it does have the T here. The flow attribute hasn't been set up yet, so it's not actually linked to any tag. So we want to create a PyPoint data reference, and I could hard code the template to use that exact tag that has my area, my process cell, my unit, and flow. But we would prefer that it would be dynamic because we would like to be able to use this template for the initialize phase for any unit, and it should correctly then pull, pick up the tag that was created specifically for that unit. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to the library and create unflow. Um, I can either say data reference, PyPoint data reference, and click settings, or if I just click settings, it brings up this window specifically for the PyPoint data reference. And what I need is some sort of use of substitution parameters here in this tag name that would correctly resolve the the name of our tag and it turns out I actually do have that structure in AF somewhere already I have it here in my elements and my unit happens to be the primary referenced element on that event frame so if I go back to initialize and check uh, referenced elements sure enough there's my unit so what I'm going to do is use substitution parameters to rebuild the entire tag name and I'm just going to do that in Notepad so it's a little bit easier to see. But what I essentially need to rebuild is something that says factory1 underscore my area underscore my process cell underscore my unit underscore flow. And this is similar to placeholders, but we're going to be using AF substitution parameters. So the first thing is factory one is actually just hard coded. So I'm going to use factory one underscore. And then we need something that references my area. And it might actually be easier to start with my unit. So for now, I'm just going to say we're going to, we need to fill in my area and my process cell. And then let's do my unit first. You actually reference the name of your primary referenced element with percent element percent. Okay. And then we actually want the parent of that element to get my process cell. So to do that, you do percent dot dot backslash element percent. So that's going to fill in with whatever the parent is of your unit. And then my area is very similar as well then. It's percent dot dot backslash dot dot backslash element percent. So this is going to say factory one, it's going to go two elements above your primary reference element, underscore one element above your primary reference element, underscore the name of your element, and then we have underscore, and we could type in the word flow, but in fact, we would just prefer to use the name of our attribute that we're on. So that's just percent attribute. So we want this as the name of our PyPoint data reference, or this is our PyPoint data reference. So I'm gonna copy that and go back to my template go to settings. I'm going to paste that in for my tag name. I'm going to click OK on that. And I'm going to go to my actual event frame, go to attributes, click refresh. And now you can see that the tag has resolved to, to the uh, correct tag, factory one, my area, my process, my unit flow. But the actual value of the flow still says zero. And that's coming from this default value here. And the fact that before we had set up the template, we actually did recover the event frame and capture that value. So now that we have the template set up correctly, if I just right click on initialize, say capture or recapture values, 
we now get the correct value of 13 and the later of the two timestamps. But if you right click on that and say time series data, you can definitely see that within the time period of the start and end time of the initialized phase, you get the values of 12 and 13. And this is actually really good because now if you use any client like for instance, RT reports, and you say bring in the compressed values between the start and end time of the initialize phase, it's going to bring in both the value 12 and 13. And same thing for PyVision. If you're visualizing your event frames in PyVision, and here you have a PyPoint data reference for your event frame attribute, you'll be able to see both the values of 12 and 13 for your time series data for that uh, PyPoint data reference event frame attribute. So now I've gone through the steps to show you how to take some of your EVT data and write those to tag templates, how to create a custom event frame template and associate that with various levels of your event frames based on, for instance, the name of the event frame, and then how that ends up looking in PySystem Explorer and how you would eventually be able to uh, trend or gather some of your time series data based off of PyPoint data reference event frame attributes.